Hi everyone, my name is Hannah, and today on YouTuna, we're going to explain how we are related to tuna. We don't look like relatives, do we? But we do have some similarities. The head with two eyes, with a mouth with teeth, eh, the rest of the body is pretty different unless you're a mermaid. But there's something inside the tuna that makes it very clear that we're relatives. If we were to slice the tuna lengthways and look inside, we see that the tuna has a backbone. And we do too, right? From the top, you know, it goes all the way from our head to the bottom of our spine. So this backbone or spinal column means that we and the tuna are both vertebrates. So who was the last common ancestor of humans and tuna? I'm going to explain that to you right now. About a little over 500 million years ago, in the warm waters of the Cambrian, there was a simple little fish. It didn't have too many frills or anything, but it did have a head with eyes, and it did have muscles that were the same type of muscles that we see in fish today, and it had also a backbone, even if it was a fairly primitive one. So this fish was the ancestor, or a fish like it was the ancestor of modern vertebrates. What happened? Evolution took over and millions of years went by. And here we come to a crossroads. Because this fish had no jaws. It just had a little mouth that could only eat probably soft matter, little tiny things. These fish without jaws actually did quite well, and they had all sorts of different shapes and forms. Some of them were pretty strange, like this one from the Silurian. And on the other hand, we have some fish that have come up with an incredible new invention, which is jaws. And fish with jaws became incredibly successful, because suddenly they could eat all sorts of things. They could even eat one another. Here we have a set of shark jaws. Impressive, aren't they? Can you imagine if sharks didn't have jaws and teeth? They wouldn't really be sharks. Anyway, this invention was a revolution in the world of vertebrates. Okay, so a question. Do we have jaws? Yes. We do. And do tuna have jaws? Yes. They do. In fact, they're very powerful predators. So that means that tuna and humans are fish with jaws. Now, these fish with jaws continued to evolve over millions of years. And here we have another crossroads. And in this case, it's because two major groups of fish emerged. One was the group of the sharks and rays, and they're cartilaginous fish. That means that their backbone and all the bones in their body are made of cartilage instead of bone. This is a prehistoric shark, and as you can see, they look pretty similar to modern sharks, although the mouth was more in the front of the, of the head. And then the other group were bony fish, whose skeleton was made entirely of bone. Is our skeleton made of cartilage? No. Is it made of bone? Yes. yes. It is. It's made out of hard bone. And so is the skeleton of tuna. So tuna and humans are both bony fish. Now, evolution continued on its way until the Devonian period, about 400 million years ago. And there we come to another crossroads. But this crossroads has to do specifically with the fins. Okay? We have two kinds of fish. We have fish who have a bony support and then directly these rays, and they're called ray fins. And then there's another kind of fish which instead of having ray fins has something called lobe fins. And the lobe fins have a little bone that attaches to two other bones, and then it has littler bones, and then finally the rays. Okay, so if we look at the tuna, right, we see that the tuna has one support area and then all the rays. So are tuna ray fins? Yes. Yes, they are. Now, what about us? I'll give you a clue. Think, we have one bone, 
two bones, a bunch of little bones. Are we lobe fins? Yes. We are. So this is a rather sad moment because this is when our ancestors and the ancestors of Tuna go their separate ways. But that's life. What happened between here and modern tuna and modern humans? On the side of the lobe fins, what happened is that some lobe fins did a remarkable thing. They started to leave the water and move on to land. And they did this thanks to the fact that the bones in those fins, those little bones we just saw here, are perfect for making feet. And these were the first tetrapods, or animals with four legs. From these tetrapods came every other tetrapod you can possibly imagine. There were crocodiles and dinosaurs and eventually birds and also the ancestors of mammals. And the mammals have evolved and evolved and evolved and eventually we get humans. And what happened in the meantime with the tuna lineage? What happened here with the ray fins is that they came up with lots of improvements and at one certain point about 200 million years ago we get a group of fish called the teleosts who are a really well designed group of fish and they have a symmetrical tail, they've improved their fins in various ways, they've made a lot of improvements including a much better jaw this one in particular was rather ugly, he looked like a bulldog. And from within the group of the teleosts is where the family of the tuna evolved. Okay, so here we are, modern tuna, modern humans. Who was our common ancestor? That's what we really wanted to find out, right? So let's go back in time. Back we go, back we go. Back to the ray fins and the lobe fins and ah! Here's the last fish we saw that was before the two lines split, right? So this would be our great 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 grandmother. Okay? So yeah, it's true. We're very distant cousins of tuna, but we are related. And so I think that means that this grandmother of ours deserves a frame. And there you have it. This fish is the ancestor of humans and tuna.